So like every producer ever, I love using audio samples in my music, but sometimes I can't get the right sample, and if I do get the right sample, I can't flip it exactly the way that I want to. Audio samples are great, but using MIDI is really where you can put your own stamp on your music. So today I'm gonna to show you why you should be using MIDI samples, and how to flip it so you can make a banger. I listened to the track that I'm gonna be showing you guys examples from. My eyes were watering. I've got tissue here, I'm not even, not even joking. If you don't flip MIDI, you're losing, bro. <laughs> as simple as that. So my first tip is, with MIDI samples, you get to break it apart and rebuild it. I'm talking Lego. This is the first main advantage that MIDI has over audio samples. You get to make it your puppet. The sample doesn't tell you what to make, you are the boss. Whether I'm using an audio or a MIDI sample, I like to delete all the unnecessary. It makes it easier to work with. Otherwise, if the sample's too complicated or it's too rich, it kind of tells you what it should be and locks you into one way of thinking about it. So for this MIDI melody, I deleted a lot of the notes, added a couple of my own, and then looped it. Now it's way more repetitive and easier for listeners to latch onto. I also separated the MIDI melody into two versions, one with just the lower notes and one with both the lower and the higher notes. This gives me way more room to play around with and unlike audio samples, I can transform this MIDI into anything I want as power. Now another thing that makes MIDI samples so great, and this is the obvious one, you get to use any sound that you want. This is the second main advantage MIDI samples have over audio. Now this was just a rough demo, but something I didn't get a chance to do was experiment with putting this same melody onto different sounds and seeing how it compares. This way we can add variation to the track without changing the essence of what it actually is. And also, more importantly, you're making it more personal to you because everyone has their own taste of what sounds they think sound good in their own music. Now this third point is not exclusive to MIDI samples because you can do it with audio as well. But one thing you definitely want to do if you're flipping MIDI samples is to process the MIDI. Add whatever effects you like to make this MIDI your own. In the case for this melody, I put on an auto filter and I turned up the drive. And I also put on a hybrid reverb preset called Artificial Flutter Hall. Now as well as giving it its own space, it has this wobble and a certain instability and that's perfect for a futuristic vibe. At this point you can still turn the MIDI into audio. If you freeze and flatten the track, it will print all the effects along with it. Then you can adjust the pitch with the warp turned on and both the pitch of the notes and the pitch of the effects are both being affected. and it's the best sound in the whole track. And as a listener, it really makes you wonder where you are. You get to hear the tiniest details in the sound. It's like the subatomic level, like Ant-Man or something. So the fourth tip is, you wanna change the context of the MIDI when you found it. So instead of me keeping this one as just a melody, I turned it into a groove. That's why it bangs so hard, even when there's no drums around it. Rhythmically, it can really hold its own, and one of the string notes even hit on the same beat that a snare drum would. It's easy to hear the original MIDI and think, I'm gonna use it for like an orchestral piece for an advert or something like that. But the best producers are able to hear what something could be, and not just use it as it already is. Now my fifth tip to flip that MIDI sample and really show it at its best, is you have to add additional MIDI parts around it. Some producers let the sample do all the heavy lifting, like Kanye West. He tends to often make the sample the centerpiece of the track. Sometimes I do the same thing, like when I sample Beethoven to make a draw track. With this example, I wanted to keep the sample as the focus of the piece. So I'm not really gonna add too many things that distract all the listeners from it. But most of the time I try and make it fit into the piece rather than stand out and attract all the attention. I even use a second MIDI sample for the intro and the build up. Now neither of the MIDI samples are in the spotlight. They're both just as important as each other. Now I can add all my other mini parts like my drums, my melodies and my 808s.
And I think for the first three years that I spent producing music, I didn't use any samples except for drum one shots. Everything else I programmed in without a keyboard, just using the mouse and clicking in with a pencil. Obviously now I use a lot of samples and MIDI and a whole mixture of everything. But that period really taught me how to make anything I want and not be restricted by someone else's vision of what they think a melody should be. Now, if you like future based drums, check out the link in my description. There's a drum kit in there that's 10 times better than this one. And this one is already playing. But that's it for me in today's video. I hope you've been inspired. I'm actually gonna start a live stream every Thursday, 9 p.m. GMT. This is a chance for you guys to send me your music for me to feedback on. But it's only for my subscribers, so make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.